pandemic has brought vaccines center stage, shining a spotlight on them like never before. But did you know that here in Oxford, we're working on vaccines against one of the world's deadliest and most ancient diseases? Malaria. Nearly half the world's population lives in areas at risk for malaria transmission, with pregnant women and young children being the most vulnerable. Malaria is one of the leading causes of deaths in many developing countries, with 627,000 deaths in 2020 alone. It's clear that a safe and effective vaccine would change the lives and futures of millions of people across the planet. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Vaccines work by promoting the human body to make antibodies against a particular pathogen, such as a virus, bacteria, and in the case of malaria, a parasite. Antibodies are large proteins produced by the body's immune system that fight pathogens. If we can prompt the body to make antibodies using a vaccine, then the immune system is primed and ready to face a real attack. When designing a new vaccine, you need to be sure that it's driving a good antibody response. And that's where our work comes in. Using blood samples from clinical trial volunteers, we can measure the antibody response to the vaccine itself. Let's show you how by taking a sneak peek behind the scenes in our labs in both Oxford and Tanzania, where our collaborators work. Firstly, the samples arrive in the lab from the vaccine clinic. They're checked, racked, and carefully documented. Next, the blood samples are loaded into a special machine called a centrifuge. This spins the tube at 1800 rotations per minute and causes the different components of blood, like plasma and cells, to separate out based on their different densities. These different fractions can then be carefully collected one by one and placed into different tubes for further analysis. For example, some samples will be sent for cellular analysis, where we can look at what portion of the immune cells, like B and T cells, have responded to our vaccines. And plasma samples will be sent for antibody analysis to measure the concentration of antibodies specific against our vaccine. Antibodies are really important for fighting the malaria parasite quickly, and so we have to check that the vaccine is causing enough to be made. It's important our samples are kept in the best condition possible. In the same way you keep food fresh for a few months in the freezer, well, we can do the same with our samples by keeping them really, really cold. Plasma samples are kept in the minus 80 freezer for long-term storage, and immune cells are kept in liquid nitrogen, which has a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. To measure the antibody responses to our vaccine, a key part of our research, we remove some of the blood plasma or serum samples from the freezer and dilute them in a solution. The samples are then carefully dropped into a plate that's been coated with the malarial protein of interest. We add control solutions that contain a known concentration of antibody to help us interpret our results, and samples are also always run in replicate to help control for random variation. At this point, the plate is washed to remove any antibodies that have not bound to the malarial protein. Next, a secondary antibody is added to detect antibodies that have bound to the plate. We also add a special reagent that causes a yellow colour change in wells where the vaccine-specific antibodies have been found, so we can actually see if there's been an antibody response. A more pronounced colour change shows a stronger antibody response, and that's what we're looking for. We can then compare colour change responses in populations that have and have not been exposed to malaria to see how good our vaccine is at promoting antibody responses. And there you have it. By testing samples that come from volunteers in this way, we hope to identify the most effective vaccine candidates, paving the way for a world-changing malaria vaccine.